Each year when we start the matter unit, uh, I enjoy teaching about chemical change and physical change, and we talk about evidence. How do we know if a chemical change or a physical change has occurred? This is a nice demonstration. Once the students have the basic idea as to knowing the difference between a chemical and physical change, really applying that and then going a step further. What I have here would be a solution of magnesium sulfate, Epsom salt, and you could even show that being dissolved in water. Over here I have sodium hydroxide solution, and again you could show that the solid sodium hydroxide being dissolved in water. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the two together. And again, it, what I like to do with this demonstration is review some of the material that we already know and then go the next step and see what they don't know, perhaps. What I'm going to do is I'm simply going to pour these two together. In fact, let me set that down like that. And Part of the scientific me method is making good observations. What we see here would be the formation of a white precipitate. But we would start with chemical change or physical change. Students would say, chemical change, and why is that? Well, you can't go back. Okay, what other evidence do we see? Well, we see a white solid substance. It looks chunky. I might walk out and show the students Yes, indeed, it is a, a solid substance in there. Chemical change, physical change. Once we have the class in agreement that it's a chemical change, then I'm going to bring in some of the words that we might use to describe it. So I would then go to the board. I mixed magnesium sulfate with sodium hydroxide. At this point, I'm going to use nothing but the words because we haven't talked about the chemical formulas yet. I only want to introduce one new concept and whether or not they can write the equation with the chemical symbols, I don't want that to be a distraction. So we're going to keep this in the word equation form and I tell the students to look for patterns, look for trends, see if you can understand the logic. I tell the students that when I mix these two, one of the products, one of the products will be this. And I say, some of you may catch on to this. See if you can see the pattern. Watch what I'm doing. Well, let's see. If I mix magnesium sulfate with sodium hydroxide, I know one of the products is going to be magnesium hydroxide, and something else is going to be produced. D does everybody see how I arrived at that? Immediately hands start shooting up around the room, hey, it's going to be sodium sulfate or sulfate sodium. But what that tells me is that they're seeing if I took magnesium and it combined with the hydroxide, the sodium and the sulfate are going to combine. And that's an important thing. And it allows me to say, wow, you guys really can see the patterns. By keeping the focus on the words, we eliminate confusion about why do you only have one sodium here, and yet in a chemical formula it would be sodium and a 2SO4. We eliminate that confusion. We can introduce terms like it's a double replacement. The ions, if they understand that word, hey, the ions switch. Well, another topic that we've talked about would be solubility. Well, I know because I dissolved each of my starting materials in water that these two are most definitely soluble in water. We could look up on a material safety data sheet, or we could look in the Merck index or solubility tables, and what we would see is that this substance, magnesium hydroxide, is insoluble in water. Sodium sulfate, again, we could look that up, and we would see that that is soluble in water. 
So when we look at the beaker, and what we see is a white precipitate, the students are able to say the white precipitate must have been the magnesium hydroxide. And that's an important thing for them to recognize that precipitates are insoluble in water. You might teach it as liquid liquid when it makes a solid, but making a connection between a precipitate and the word insoluble is important. Also with this simple demonstration, we can introduce terms like reactants. We mix reactants together and we produce products. So on the fly, if you think about it, we're showing a demonstration that can teach many, many different topics. Reactants are mixed together, they react together, and we produce new products. Well now, I want to take this a step further. Many times, we teach definitions first, but in this case, what I want to do is I want to show them something first, ask them to make some predictions, and then share the definition of a concept with them. I know where I'm taking them, but I don't want them to know. They're along for the ride. What I have here would be the same solutions, okay? the same solutions in the beakers, and I've already, to save some time, measured the total mass of the system. It is balanced. I'm reading 180 180.50. 180.50. By this time, they can already start to see where I'm taking them. We know when we mix a solution of magnesium sulfate with sodium hydroxide, we know we're going to produce an insoluble white precipitate, magnesium hydroxide, and the soluble sodium sulfate. The question at hand is, if the original mass of the beakers and the solutions, 180.50 grams, if that's what I'm starting with, What's going to be the final mass over here? If we stop for a moment and we ask our students to make some predictions, the three possible outcomes, does the mass go up, does the mass go down, or does the mass remain the same? Again, to make sure that we're very clear, what I'm going to tell them is, when I pour this into the other beaker, what's going to happen to the total mass? I know I'm producing a white solid. I can also ask them, does it make a difference if I pour the magnesium sulfate into the sodium hydroxide, I can ask them the way that it's written on the board, does that imply an order? It turns out it does not. It does not. I'm going to pour this into the sodium hydroxide. We know what's going to happen. A chemical change, a white precipitate will form. Ask the students to explain their reasoning. Maybe take a vote. If you have the clicker technology, they can even chime in anonymously and you can see exactly what they're thinking. At this point, every student in your class cares and you control everything. 
Hurry up and put the beaker on the balance, Mr. Bracken. Yes. And if we focus right here, we should see, we should see the mass before equals the mass after. Okay? 180.50. Okay, 180.50, and what we call this the law of conservation of matter, or the law of conservation of mass. What you start with, you end with, and that's an important, useful definition. Many times the students can recite the textbook definition. Matter cannot be created or destroyed, it merely changes forms. But asking them to predict, and what we're playing with in terms of the educational research that supports this, and if we listen to what our students say, they'll say, solids are heavier. Gases are light and fluffy, but solids, they're chunky. Maybe buzzwords like density. The density is greater. But if we focus just on the mass, also we can say, well, the, this does make sense to us. All the magnesium combined with the hydroxide. If a chemical change is simply rearranging the puzzle pieces, the mass of a jigsaw puzzle does not change from when it's in the box to when we put it together on a table, unless we lose puzzle pieces. Here, forming the white precipitate, as well as the soluble substance, we have, in essence, a closed system here where nothing got in and nothing escaped. Okay. The Law of Conservation of Matter demo, we can tie it even further. One more thing, a connection to the outside world. What's that look like? If you ask the students, magnesium hydroxide, what's it look like? Someone in your class will eventually say, Milk, hmm, it's a good time to point out magnesium hydroxide. That sounds like a chemical, and the media would have us believe that all chemicals are bad. Vitamins are good for us, but chemicals not so good. Magnesium hydroxide. Here's where the marketing folks, not all of you will be chemistry majors, and that's okay, but as you think about how could we sell this product, we're going to have a tough, tough mountain to climb if we're wanting to say magnesium hydroxide. Take it and you'll feel better. Hydroxide, is that like drain cleaner? But if we call it milk of magnesia, oh, milk. Milk is good for us. Mmm, I like milk. Milk is good. Now, you might be surprised to find, hey, a blue bottle. Milk of magnesia is used uh, to, to neutralize excess stomach acid. Um, so it's an antacid. We might not want to call it a base. We call it an antacid, so it sounds nicer. It's working against acid. But you may want to ask your students, why the blue bottle? It's not light sensitive. There's no reason that it has to be in a blue plastic bottle. 
an opaque bottle, if you've used that term. Otherwise, you might say, you can't even see the stuff inside. Well, wait a minute. Hmm. The active ingredient, the active ingredient, magnesium hydroxide, we just talked about that being insoluble. How can that be? If we look here, directions, the first thing they want you to do is to shake it. Because if you could see this, if this were in simply a clear plastic container, all of the insoluble magnesium hydroxide would be right down there. It would be as if you were looking inside a paint can saying, oh my gosh, how long has this been on the shelf? It's all fallen to the bottom. Ooh, this one's bad. This one's bad too. This one's bad. So they're not going to let you see it because it's all at the bottom. So step number one. Shake, 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 shake. You stir it up. So it looks more like this. So that that way you then say, yeah, coming out looking just like milk. Yeah, yeah. They're smart enough to know that if you saw this on the shelf, ew, it's like all chalky on the bottom. Don't let them see it. They don't need to see it on the shelf. Trust the blue. Blue is your friend. So lots and lots of chemistry can be taught with this demonstration. Sometimes I feel, as a chemistry teacher, I know I'm in a hurry. You can mix chemical A with chemical B, get a precipitate, and teach very quickly. But this is one of those where you can incorporate many different concepts, some consumer chemistry along the way. And, and for those who are not going into science, this take-home message of multiple types of college majors will use chemistry and the consumer chemistry uh, is a very, very important life lesson for them. So I hope you enjoy the milk of magnesia demonstration and how I teach the law of conservation of matter.